Welcome back to my channel, Spencer Colgan is Wallpaper. This video is unique. It involves wallpaper removal. What's unique about it is that if you can remove the wallpaper in this video, you don't have to watch any other videos on wallpaper removal. Now this video is going to be followed by a part two when it's published. And that's going to be on how to skim coat the walls from which you remove wallpaper. So when it comes out, please just take a look at the link below in this video in its description so that you can watch part two. Thanks for joining me on my channel. And if you like the video, do me a favor, please click on like and subscribe to my channel. Enjoy the video. Hi, this is Spencer Colgan from Spencer Colgan is Wallpaper. And we have a wallpaper removal project. I'm going to consider this your typical, thin, difficult to remove wallpaper. I'm going to tell you why right off the bat. One of the most prevalent causes for difficulty in wallpaper removal is not so much in my experience. The adhesive that was used, or even the lack of preparation on the walls that gives rise to problems in removing wallpaper. The most prevalent, and those things cause trouble, but the most prevalent cause for wallpaper removal difficulties, in my experience, has been the constitution of the material you you're removing. What do I mean by that? If the material that you're removing is super thin, doesn't it stand to reason that because it's poorly constituted, because of its thinness, that is going to come down with difficulty in small strips? The most easy thing to remove Grass cloth, commercial vinyl, those things come down in one piece. So what is the moral of the story here? You must anticipate the difficulty and come up with a strategy that limits the amount of time that you waste, limits the amount of time of, of not knowing what to do, do your homework before you start taking this stuff down. Unless you want to waste double and triple the amount of time removing it. Knowing what you're removing is half the battle. If it's super thin, here's a rule. Use lots of water and lots of patience. Super thick, tear it down. Have a pizza party and tear it down. Super thin, lots of water and lots of patience. Let's get to it. Water sprayer that you get at your local box store. I'm now looking to identify all of my seams and just wet them, okay? Be careful around outlets. Water conducts electricity and can give you quite a charge, okay? You see? Now, just bear with me here, okay? And watch my water attack these seams. A woman recently told me, and it was a very cynical remark. I think she said it on my YouTube channel. She said something like, you don't know what you're doing. You're not even using uh, laundry softener. And I responded without the nastiness by saying, why would you want chemicals from laundry softener, fabric softener, on your walls when you're going to have to clean it? Wouldn't you just want to remove it with water, let the water dry, and then 
paint your walls. Fabric softener is a chemical. I don't want that on my walls if I don't have to have it. Imagine trying to now get the, get the residue of the fabric softener off of your walls. You wanna deal with that? I don't. See, we're soaking all of the... If you think about it, if you have wallpaper up and you have a roof leak, what's the first thing that's coming down? A, paint on your ceiling. B, paint on your walls. Or C, wallpaper on your walls. I'm gonna tell you, the first thing that's coming down is what's ever on your walls. I have seen roof leaks where the paint is actually holding back the water in a big blister, literally two feet long. Well, if there's wallpaper on that, the first thing that's coming down is the wallpaper because the water liquefies the glue and compromises the integrity of the adhesion. It's really that simple. But here's where all of you go wrong. You wake up on a Saturday morning at eight o'clock. We're gonna remove wallpaper today. At 9.30, 10 o'clock, you start doing it. And then you start a half an hour later, digging at your wallpaper, wondering why the heck isn't it coming off as easy as Spencer said it should come off. One of you quits in frustration. The other continues. Am I not describing half of the folks that watch this stuff? And then the other, the frustrated party comes in and starts digging away at it. This is what, these are the jobs that I get called to. They start digging away at it with some hard object, maybe one of these, maybe a scraper. I had one woman tell me that her husband used, she said, what's that thing called where you bang screws into the wall? I said, I don't know. I don't bang screws into a wall. She goes, you know that thing that you bang nails and screws into the wall? So I said, you mean a hammer? She said, yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy removed wallpaper with the back of a hammer. So, uh, sometimes people lack patience so badly that they just want to take the wall down with it. All right, obviously. Um, okay, so we have one issue going on here. Somebody just put up wallpaper without regard to preparing the walls. You see, if this were sealed, if this paper was sealed properly, this, this wouldn't come off. There would be a barrier that was placed on here, either guards, G-A-R-D-Z, or bin, V-I-N, from Zinser, uh, or uh, Roman 999, <clears throat> that would have sealed this and kept this from going down to the paper. But, if people didn't mess up so much, I would make a lot less money, if you think about it. All I'm looking to do is identify the best method of removal. I've noted that this wallpaper job is now not done by a professional, because I see this, so now I know what I'm dealing with. Water, water, water lots of patience and I can expect some some uh, serious repairs all right let me get to it and I will continue to comment as I see fit
just with water. Now, that's the shell, this colorful stuff, and this is the backing, okay? Now that backing, if it's got a sealant under it, sealing this, then this is just come off with water. You know? And if this happens to you, it didn't mean that you lacked patience. It might, but in this case, if it just came down, came off and got exposed the way I just did it, well, you had somebody who didn't know what he was doing putting up the wallpaper. Although they did a very good job hiding the seams on this paper. But sometimes people are selling the house or they're gonna die in the house. They don't care about what it, you're gonna go through when you take the wallpaper down. They couldn't care less. That's your problem. That's how they look at it. By the way, just as an aside, you, you see how some wallpaper works? You see how it's joined here? And it's off there. And it's also off right there. This is an inferior product, you know? So. Now I've just gone through my whole water bottle. The reason the border is coming off so easily is because it's, it's a thicker product than the wallpaper. Remember I talked in the beginning about it, it being poorly constituted? Well, this is better constituted than the, uh, than, than wallpaper. Here, take a look. You see how thick this is? And look how thin the wallpaper is, okay? Can you see the difference? You can almost see through this, right? Look, see my finger there? Now you can't see my finger here, right? See the difference? And so, like I said, the thicker the product, the more easily it's gonna come down. One of the things you want to use when you're spraying near the ceiling is a shield. Now, you can make a shield with cardboard, like the paint store sells you shields of cardboard, or you can use a paint shield. And that's simply going to protect the ceiling from getting saturated, especially if it's a flat paint. And that's fine enough. All you're looking to do is prevent a tremendous amount of spray on the ceiling. Your ceiling's gonna get wet. And you should expect to paint your ceiling, especially if you're dealing with stubborn wallpaper removal. But you don't wanna soak the ceiling, and so you use a shield. Now I'm just looking to wet the seam, only the seam. You can get the sprayer that you just hold down and it, it discharges the water. Either way, your finger's gonna hurt at the end of the day. So we'll just keep on spraying this and see how easy or how difficult this comes down. As we move along, I wanna show you some things that are happening. So we have the shell and all of this is nice and wet. The shell that's going to be the way it is for the rest of the job. Getting that off. 
okay? This is what we can expect. That, that sort of difficulty level, okay? Because it's junk. If you buy junk wallpaper, that's, that's how it comes down. As we said earlier, the border is, is thicker junk. It's still junk. And you can expect that. Now, after you remove the junky wallpaper, this is what you have left. You want to be real nice to this stuff. Oh, so gentle. Look. Okay, once you get that exposed. Now you see where it didn't come off? Why is that? Because it's not wet. Please, follow my instructions and learn from all my mistakes. Wet it. And when it comes down hard, wet it again. Okay? I'm trying to show you so that you can learn how not to... I mean, what is learning? Everybody started somewhere, right? Whoever taught made the most mistakes. That's how they're able to teach. Nobody knows anything until they start doing. Isn't that the truth? And when they know how to do it quickly and with the least amount of mistakes, then they become a teacher. And I'm here to show you how not to waste your time and how not to get frustrated and what you should expect. So there I just showed it to you. That's essentially how to remove wool. Okay, you remove it with water and then you determine what comes down easy and what doesn't. And the whole trick is water and patience. Don't start taking metal scrapers to this stuff because it's not coming down easily. Go right to your water and use the water to get it off of the wall. Okay, you, because you can see how the difficulty is exaggerated due to the lack of water, okay? Water is your friend in this case. Okay, I'm gonna continue with the water. So far in the video, I have not introduced any tools other than water and saturation in order to remove the paper. Now, don't use anything to remove wallpaper, just water in your hands. Here's an exception. I say it like that because most of you will go right to the tool. This is a paint edger. Theoretically, you put it up against something and you cut a nice straight line. It doesn't work. But it's a very non-invasive tool that doesn't ruin sheetrock and scrape it all up and gouge it. To, to get off larger pieces of the backing than if you were to just peel it off with your fingers. The general rule is don't use anything. I would rather that you spend three hours removing wallpaper in a room than two and a half hours by using a tool and then gouging your walls. I would rather you spend more time, get it all done with minimal damage to the walls than using this or something metal, scraping it up and saving a big half hour to 45 minutes. Let me show you what I mean. Let's take it down to the action. Here we have large sections of the backing ready to come off. Watch what happens if all I use is my fingers. Watch what happens, look. This is ready to come off. You ever, you ever do a hard boiled egg and get the shell off? Take a hard boiled egg, give it two minutes to cool off, and then put it in a cup of cold water that's half full. Cover the top with your hand and shake the water up and down, banging that egg up against your hand and the cup, and the shell comes right off. Try it out, I saw it on YouTube. Now you saw the slivers that just came off, right? This is one of the times I would recommend using a tool. Look at how this hugs that wall, see? It doesn't leave any space, right? And so watch how easy it's gonna to be to take off larger sections of this, right? Look, 
Would you rather be picking this off with your finger? No, right? Now, you, as the person who's never done it before, you have to understand why I went for this tool. Now look, I go from using it like this to like this. Look. Look at that. And the tool, you see, I even, I gouged the wall with a piece of plastic. Okay, but you, who may not know how to fix that so easily, that's why I'm telling you, don't use a tool. Except for, this is an exception, okay? You see? You see, if there were not people who didn't know what they were doing that created situations like this, I'd be out of a job. So uh, don't tell everybody what I'm telling you. This is just poor preparation. This wasn't sealed. It wasn't sealed. You know? There's so many people who don't know what they're doing. And they love giving advice on YouTube. Oh my goodness. Half of the remarks I get are so nice. Half of them are so nasty. But uh, I leave them up there. I don't have the time to delete them. And they're so ignorant with the comments. You know, what can you do? Just leave it. At least they're learning how to write. Because I correct their English. If they, if they don't use periods or quotations or capitals, I, I rewrite their sentence for them sometimes and I correct their English. And I say, since you say I'm not a great wallpaper guy, I did have a minor in English. Let me help you out by correcting your terrible grammar. Usually, they don't respond when I do that. Usually. I make it a point in life now. I don't argue with people. If you disagree, that's fine. But you're not going to get an argument out of me. I will accept your dissent. Just like the Supreme Court. La di 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 di. Basically, wallpaper removal is boring, you know? It's boring. And a lot of people don't know how to do it. They're intimidated by it. Okay, I'm gonna continue on. Okay, all of the wallpapers down. I would say that the jump took two hours and a half. No breaks. Okay, let's review. We have to determine the difficulty of the project. What are you pulling down? Grass cloth that's gonna come down in beautiful long sheets? Are you pulling down commercial vinyl that's gonna come down in beautiful long sheets? Are you pulling down a well-constituted residential material that has a little vinyl, a little paper in it, a composite? Or are you pulling down junk, like I just did? Not only are you pulling down junk, which is the worst case removal scenario, are you pulling down junk that was put up by an ignorant person? Ignorant as to how wallpaper is installed and how walls are prepared. That's your worst case scenario. Number one, it's junk. Number two, it was put up by somebody ignorant. And it's this, this is the best removal video. Because if you can do this, you can do any removal. Please take out a pencil and write down what I'm about to say. And rewind if you need to hear it again. 
A lot of times my good viewers ask me questions and the answers are right in the videos. Either they're not listening or they're not watching the whole video. And it's a little bit challenging to my patients because here's why. I go through all of this time to make you a video, to edit the video, and then I have to take out my time to answer the questions, which I don't mind. But when the answer's in the video, come on, that's not fair to me. Number one, how do we fix this? Now, did I do this? Huh. Yeah, technically I did it. But I, as you saw when I began the video, why this happened. Let's talk about sheetrock. Sheetrock is a composite of gypsum, which is compressed plaster, right? Compressed plaster, glue. Now, I don't know anything about the making of sheetrock, but I'm gonna tell you, it's probably baked, right? How else are they gonna get it to, just like bricks are baked, right? In a kiln, sheetrock is probably baked, to make it all hard. And then, after it comes out, they probably glue the gypsum and put paper on it. Not only one layer, but they put the brown and then they put white or gray. So guess what? Just like it goes on, it can come off if you're not careful. So, in order to treat sheetrock, either to prime it, or paint it, or wallpaper it, you have to seal it. This has to be sealed. Now, that's sheetrock right here. That's perfect. This is the paper underneath the, the gray or white shell. In order to paint or wallpaper over sheetrock, you must seal it. I didn't say prime, I said seal it. What's the difference? Sealer penetrates the paper. You'll notice that sealers are very thin, water-like. What would you rather have going down your kitchen drain? Water or grease? Water, right? Why? Obvious reasons. It's thin. It's going to go through the group to drain. If you seal sheetrock with thin sealer, it's going to penetrate the paper and then the brown paper. And it's not going to come off when you pull down your wallpaper. If you use primer on raw sheetrock, big mistake. Primer is the equivalent. How many of you have ever eaten an ice cream cone and then <clears throat> right on the ground? Or you've watched this happen to somebody else. You see that puddle of ice cream? Is it thin or thick? It's thick, right? Scoop it up, put it on your sheetrock. Is that going to seal your sheetrock? Or is that going to lay on top of it and dry? It's gonna lay on top of it and dry. And you're gonna have to scrape the excess off. You see the difference between sealing sheetrock and priming it? I just told you. Raw sheetrock is always sealed. Spencer did not say that you seal walls before you prime them. No, I didn't say that. I said you seal raw sheetrock before you prime them and then paint them or wallpaper them. That's what I'm saying. Raw sheetrock must be sealed because the paper needs to get tied down. And the way you tie it down is to penetrate it 
and glue it to the gypsum. That's number one. After it's painted properly, after, I, I should say, after it's sealed, then you can prime it. Let's say you're painting the wall navy blue. Prime it. It's already sealed. Prime it. Now, what are you doing? You're conditioning the surface. What are you doing? You're covering all of the sheetrock. Everybody touches sheetrock. It's in trucks. It gets a little rain on it, right? Sealer is clear. It's not going to cover oil from somebody's hand. That's going to cause you paint to flash. It's not going to. It's not going to cover a little stain that came from water when they were they left it outside and the rain got on it just a little bit. It doesn't violate the integrity of the sheetrock, no. But it does have to get primed after that. So then, after we seal it, we prime it. Primer has qualities in it that sealers don't. Sealers have qualities in it that primers don't. And each has qualities in it that paint doesn't have. So we're talking about three different materials. Sealer, primer, and paint. Please, if you want a good job, don't buy the stuff that says primer sealer. Spend the money. You want a perfect paint job? Seal, prime, paint. Two coats. Okay, let's get back to this. This was not sealed. This was primed. And then the guy who put the wallpaper on didn't do anything to it. He just threw the wallpaper on whatever dry liquid was on it. Okay? <clears throat> How do we fix this? Number one, let it dry overnight. <clears throat> Open the door. Open the window. And let the moisture out. It's not enough to turn on the air conditioner. Trust me when I tell you. The air conditioner is not going to remove the moisture. Your air is going to move. It's going to be less humid with the air on. But the humidity in the, in the paint and in the wet sheetrock is not going to be remedied simply by turning on the air. Trust me, I know. <clears throat> Ventilation. Overnight. Do you see this color? That's what you want right here. This is wet. This is what you want. Step number one is ventilation overnight. Don't rush this because you will blow it. Number two. Pole sand. Get yourself a pole sand. If you do it with your hand, you're going to cause yourself unnecessary fatigue. The muscles that are required to use a pole sander are larger than the muscles that are required to do this with a sponge sander or a hand sander. I'm not talking about a machine. I'm talking about the, the sponge. That's a lot on the little muscle. But if you use a pole sander, you're using your hips. You don't even have to use your arms. You're just moving those hips and those muscles are a lot stronger. All you have to do is hold your hand together. Don't even move them and just move your hips. It's a lot less fatigue on the body. What are you going to sand? See that? That's what you're going to sand. You want to get that all off. Watch what happens. Let's, let's say, ah, I'm not listening to Spencer. He don't know what he's talking about. Let's go, hon. Let's do this. Look at what my finger just did. You think you're going to sand this away? Good luck. When that's dry, that wouldn't happen. No. Pole sand it. 
you're only trying to get something that's loose off of the surface. You'll learn, you'll learn quickly. You'll learn to stop gouging the wall as you pole sand it. Okay, look at this. If you're pole sanding and this keeps happening, stop, stop, stop. All you wanna do is get this off and get these little loose particles off. Okay, I forgot the steps, but you'll remember them. I don't know what number I'm up to. Pole sand it. You're gonna make a perfect job if you follow these instructions. Now, you've got it pole sanded. You've covered your floors because you're a good worker. You're wearing a respirator because you don't want the little dust in your lungs. Take a break. Come back, and now you're ready to seal. Let's remember, we got glue on here. Huh. Watch this, watch this. What is that? What does that look like to you? That is glue. That's glue and paper. You have to arrest that glue by letting it dry overnight, pull sand, and now you have a dry glue residue. It's a dry glue residue, which is water-based. If you seal it now with a water-based product, like 9.99 or Guards, it'll do a great job. Roman 999, or Zinsers Guards, G-A-R-D-Z. Beautiful job. Another product you can use is BIN. B as in boy, I as in Ida, N as in Nancy, BIN. And that's from Zinser. <clears throat> it's an alcohol-based product. Those are three products I just gave you. Let me give you one more. Kills, K-I-L-Z, the original. It's, the, it's not an offensive odor anymore. And you put it right on the wall and it arrests the glue and ties down all of these loose particles. The 999, the Kills, the Bin alcohol, and the Guards will all arrest the surface and put a membrane over it whereby you could prime it, paint it, and or wallpaper it. Those are the four products. And you don't have to go crazy using two, three coats. One coat will do it. After that, let it dry. You want the best product? Because now we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to skim coat. What's the best product here? If you wanna start skim coating right away, you're a contractor, you don't have time to keep waiting overnight. Spend the $45 and get Zinser's Bin, B-I-N. You can start skimming within 15 minutes. It locks in the glue, it dries, it evaporates quickly. Just spill a little alcohol on the floor and you'll see how quickly it evaporates. Same thing with Zinser's Bin. After you seal this surface with guards or 999, or kills oil base, you have to wait. On those three products, you've got to wait before you start skin coating. Those three products require you to wait. The only thing that will allow you to start skin coating to make this a beautiful flat surface is the $45 per gallon bin, B-I-N. You can use either one. Do you want to save time or money? If you want to save both, go with the bin. And then you skim coat. 
This is going to require two thin coats, okay? I'm going to put a nice skin coat on, and I'm going to make it flat. Now what do I do? I have dry joint compound on my walls. Back to sealing it. I got to seal it. Got to seal it. Now you're going to go with guards. Just guards it. You could also use Roman 999. No need to be using bin, it's too expensive to waste. But after I skim coat it, and after it dries, you have to seal it. And the way to seal it is with Roman 999, or guards, G-A-R-D-Z, or you wanna know a secret? Guards is not cheap. Get yourself a half gallon of Weld Bond from Amazon. Weld bond. And you mix one part weld bond and two parts water. And you have yourself the equivalent of guards. All it is is watered down glue. That's how you seal off your skim coat. When that dries, and I mean give it a good six hours, now you're ready to paint. Okay? That's how you fix this. And there you have it. All the wallpapers down. This is not necessarily your fault, as you saw in this video. But if you start using, I didn't use any metal products on this wall. All I used is water, my fingernails for 90% of the job, and then I used the plastic Paint edger. That's all I used. And I went to my trusty $30 sprayer. If you have any questions, leave me a comment, but please do make sure that you review all of the contents of this video before you ask me the question, because I think I covered everything. All right, thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one.